Hey, it's Liz from Chillemoji.com and I'm here to talk to you about rehearing your bow. Now, when to rehear your bow can definitely vary based off of what type of music you're playing, uh, how often do you play, and even uh, when was your last rehear on the bow. Uh, and that can be change how often uh, you'll have to rehear your bow. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up and also hit the subscribe button so you'll always be notified of new Chillemoji videos that comes up. So let's dive into it. Uh, I have a bow here that I wanted to show you. Uh, this is a prime example of when to rehair your bow. There is literally hair loss on the bow. Uh, normally the hair should go all the way to the edge here um, of this little metal thing on the bow. But uh, it's, it's definitely losing a lot of hair. Uh, this bow has uh, not been rehaired in a while, but I also use this a lot for my Chelemoji Instagram account videos. And in there, because I have to do a lot of rhythmic uh, patterns with this bow, there's kind of a lot of aggressive playing going on. And this bow has <laughs> seen a lot of hair loss due to that. Um, but this this is in need of a rehair. Also, the hair is just um, it's at a point where it doesn't even really take very much for it to start breaking. So, uh, you know, when you see a bow in this state, it's uh, necessary to go take it rehaired. I know some people refer to uh, two cellos and how you know some of their videos they have like twenty hairs hanging off and everything. And I just sit there thinking like huh, well, they're going to have to go take that bow to be rehaired soon because they're losing so much hair uh, on the bow itself. Okay, so this bow um, is eventually going to need a rehair, but it's not in the immediate uh, future. As you can see, this one is a little bit different. So if I hold up the first one in comparison, you can see the difference of the amount of hair in it. This this one right here has way more hair than this one here. Just pull these little strands out of the way here. And so you can tell that this one is definitely in a little bit better shape with more hair on it. Usually when I go get my bows rehaired, I like to tell them to put as much hair as possible here because, again, bow rehairs are kind of pricey and if I can uh, get away with not having to go back so soon for a rehair, that would be really great. So <laughs> I usually ask them to put full head of hair down in this area. Some other reasons why you might need to take your bow to be rehaired is because when you are uh, tightening it, no matter how much you tighten your bow, it just doesn't tighten the bow enough and it just basically stays in this state here. Um, and I think at that point that is definitely a sign for a rehair because the, basically this hair is what I call stretched out, but a lot of times it's also um, if they rehair your bow in a certain season and then there's a drastic weather change, then the hair doesn't exactly uh, respond to that very well. The hair doesn't necessarily react very well to weather changes, and so it basically will not tighten for you. And vice versa can happen where you are only maybe doing two turns of the bow and it's so tight that like you, it just feels like if you turned it any more, it would just sort of burst off. But if you loosened it, um, then this this little screw area, you, it would actually be like sticking out and you could actually see the screw inside. And so that's also a sign that the, the hair length is probably not right for the bow at the time. This is uh, one example of a bow too uh, where I when I'm turning it, it actually takes quite a struggle to turn this. And that's important to really pay attention to as well. Um, inside of the frog here, there's what we call an eye. Uh, it's just kind of like a little metal circle inside where the screw actually goes inside to help tighten the bow. And if the fit isn't quite right, um, then it can definitely be really tight and kind of a struggle to tighten your bow. And this is really important to know because if you're not careful, you can actually strip the threading off of the screw, which is important to know. Um, the, uh, this is literally like a, a, a screw with threading around it and over time the threading gets worn down and obviously it gets worn down a lot faster if it's harder to turn. So I've, I've definitely stripped a few screws on a couple of my bows. Um, it is, it's not that it's 
never going to happen, but it shouldn't be super common either um, because if that happens m very often, um, that's usually a sign that something internally is just not fitting right and it's damaging the screw itself. Over time, it can definitely damage the bow. Definitely make sure you can easily turn, uh, tighten, and loosen your bow. So I know some of these things are just scary to hear about when we're thinking, oh my gosh, like the bow is so fragile and who knew it was so temperamental to weather that it could be tight or loose um, and you know, you just want to play your instrument. So I wanted to give you a few tips to help uh, maintain the health of your bow. First tip is when you get broken hairs or little hairs like this, make sure you just take a pair of scissors and cut them off. Um, if, if you can help it. I mean, sometimes obviously there's no time to run and get a pair of scissors to cut them off, so you have to really carefully just break off the hair. But in general, it's usually better to uh, cut them off with some scissors. Uh, I think some people where they break off a hair and then in the process of doing so, they're breaking off like five or six more. Or there's definitely been one time where someone broke off something and this entire thing just sort of popped out. Uh, so you have to kind of be careful about these things um, because they can happen. The next thing is make sure you're loosening your bow properly. At least some students of mine who I just always ask, like, why do you not loosen your bow? And a lot of times they're saying because, oh, they just they just don't think it's necessary, they don't think about it, or they want to remember what the tension is on the bow, but actually that's really bad for your bow too because you're basically maintaining the tension on the bow and in essence stretching out the bow hair itself. And no, the tension won't ever really be exactly the same. You're going from one environment to a different environment, plus like factor in the car ride, uh, it could be a different temperature. Uh, so it's really hard to just say, oh, I'm just going to keep my bow the same every time. Instead, just try to remember what it feels like on the string. You'll remember a certain amount of bounce on the string, or um, if, you're, if the stick is actually hitting the string while you're playing, then you know that it is too loose. Also, this finger testing thing, I don't understand why people do that either, because it's not like you're playing with your fingers, you're playing with your bow on the string. So again, try to remember the feeling of the bow on the string, as opposed to trying to remember what it looks like, or some people talk about like stick a pinky with in there, um, and I don't think that's necessarily accurate because it only changes based off of what season, uh, what environment are you playing in, um, and so I, I generally just try not to uh, use those sort of measures to know how much to tighten and loosen the bow. So when you're loosening the bow, just remember to loosen it just enough so that there's no more tension in the hair, but you don't want the hair itself to just come apart into like individual strands like this because inevitably that's going to snag on something and then break off as well. I like to think of it as if you know, you're know you wearing a sweater, a fuzzy sweater that has some like loop that's sticking off, it'll just catch on a nail, or catch on a doorway, or just catch passing by with someone's zipper. Um, and a lot of these cello cases have Velcro in them, and guess what? These little individual strands will also catch on that Velcro and break off as well. Storage is also really important, not only for the bow, but for also the instrument. You definitely want to try to keep it in a very moderate uh, temperature, you know, not too hot, not too cold. Uh, try to avoid putting it under direct sunlight, um, and also keep it away from being directly under a vent, like an AC vent or a heater vent. Uh, you don't want um, direct airflow on it because that can drastically change uh, the instrument. Yes. If only we could all live in such the perfect climate, then that would be great too. But <laughs> only our instruments gets to do that. Okay, so now you've determined I need to get my bow rehaired. So where do you go to get your bow rehaired? Oftentimes the places that you went to to either rent your instrument or buy your instrument, they will often have a bow rehair person on site or someone that they can recommend you to go to. Um, I go to someone who just does bow rehairs and uh, she's great, like I call her up and say I need a bow rehair and we set up an appointment and then we go from there. And oftentimes a lot of bow rehair people are like that. I would be really careful about just, you know, going to someone and saying I need my bow rehair tomorrow because more likely than not they won't be able to do that. Uh, they're often very busy with lots of people trying to ask for bow rehair, so you want to definitely pick a time where 
um, it is not like you have to give a big performance tomorrow because that's just not going to happen. Plus, when you get a bowy hair, you often have to like break in the hair in a sense that you know a lot of times they can put starter rosin on it but I usually like to just get the the clean bow and put my own rosin on it but you have to initially rosin it a lot to basically get the grit back into the hair that you like. There are different types of rehairs that you can get. I get the basic uh, stallion hair. Um, there are definitely other ones too such as uh, salt and pepper which has like little black flecks in it, like salt and pepper, and that actually has a little bit more grit in it. And there are actually fun ones too where you can get the hair dyed in different colors and you know purple and rainbow and blue and I've seen them all different colors which is super fun but I have heard that uh, the colored hair sometimes has a hard time maintaining the rosin on the hair so I would give it a try if you're really interested but just know that you know it might not be a easy solution or you're just gonna have to put a lot of rosin on it while you play. So I hope this gave you a little bit more insight on when to rehair your bow. It is a little bit of a personal taste uh, and sometimes out of necessity like this bow that definitely needs a rehair. Um, some people just can't necessarily afford to get a bow rehair immediately when they need it. So you have to do what fits your budget and your playing as well. In general, I would say that if someone is playing a lot of music all the time, you may have to even rehair your bow at least one to two times a year, if not more, dependent on what type of pieces you're playing. Obviously, if you're playing something that's like hardcore metal or like Shostakovich or um, a lot of more um, intense music, you might have to rehair your bow more often than say if you're playing Bah. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up um, and uh, hit the subscribe button below as well as well as the bell so you'll be notified of when my next Chill Emoji videos comes out. If there are any questions that I haven't answered, be sure to leave them in the comment box below. And thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!